So it's 1941. The times were changing, and also the LA Times were in the hands a of changing? a changing, or in the hands of a new president who had been trained for this. His son Norman Chandler, who seemingly makes no real waves. <laughs> I don't want to say a dud. Come on. It skips a generation. He was joined by his brothers Harrison, not making <laughs> it easier, and Philip, finally a new name, to take on managerial roles. Which was roles. a nickname for, <laughs> for, for Marion. In 1942 is when the Alley Times gets its first Pulitzer Prize for a successful campaign that resulted in the clarification and confirmation for all American newspapers of the right of free press as guaranteed under the Constitution. What's funny about me reading that was that that was the exact moment when my monthly free online access to Alley Times <laughs> articles was blocked, so I could not read more about it. A beautiful beautiful system a beautiful system i know that during the 40s the times had a huge post-depression post-war boom and advertisers and subscribers drastically increased they employed thousands of people for the day-to-day operations of the paper so they were employing a large population of the population to work for the la times norman chandler the heir to la times as a young man he delivered papers in his model t ford he went to stanford in 1922 he was his father's secretary he served seven year apprenticeship that took him through all the departments of newspaper super relatable angelina no. <laughs> 1929, he became assistant to the publisher and then assistant to the general manager in 1934. He was elected vice president and general manager in 1936. In 1938, he became a director and president and publisher when his dad resigned in 1941. He ran the paper at first in the same mold as his father and grandfather, fully supporting Republicans and opposing unions. Later in life, he became more moderate, which must have been like, it must have made him look really weak. Someone must have killed him and taken his identity. <laughs> <laughs> Regarding the 40s and 50s, Norman said, we were kind of lopsided in those days. Yeah. Yeah. You think? In the readings, Norman is remembered for two things, and to me, he's remembered for two different things. Norman is regarded as a businessman publisher, and he makes a lot of deals that at the time benefit the times, because they were changing. First, <laughs> first he publishes uh, The Mirror, the Mirror, which is a daily tabloid-sized <laughs> afternoon paper which sought to capture issues related to the middle and working class residents of LA, mostly okay, so minority. It yeah, he, yeah, It wanted to tell stories of minority groups that his father hated. <laughs> By the few quotes from LA Times writers of the day, it was a pretty lousy publication. Mm -hmm. Also, very confusingly, that's different from his next endeavor. He creates the Times Mirror Co., which was incredibly lucrative. Just to give you a snippet, in 1948, Times Mirror acquired its newspaper supplier, the publisher's paper company, which was based in Oregon. Additionally, the newspaper company co-owned, along with CBS television, KTTV. The station made its first telecast, which was the Rose Parade in 1949. What? Times Mirror Co.? Yeah, but Harrison Gray Otis already made the Times Mirror Did he do anything with it? Because I think the whole thought behind Norman was he brought all these old things back and made them lucrative. I guess. So, I mean, it was just sort of like, it must have just been like a tax thing. And they probably like owned it. And now that we own the rights to yeah, those but now words. They, now it actually was. Is a thing. Well, they co-own KTDV, which is great. And they're breaking into that, that new fan angle TV thing. Yeah, I've got two Times- of them. The next year, Times Mirror bought out CBS's interest in the station, and the Times began printing a daily television schedule. At the end of the <laughs> 50s, circulation of the Times stood at an average 50,000 daily and 90,000 on Sundays, which is huge. In addition to owning the Times, the Mirror, and KTTV, Times Mirror was active in paper manufacturing and commercial printing. 30-ish years later, the Times Mirror reported more than $3 billion in revenues for the first time in 1987, <laughs> while revenues for the LA Times exceeded $1 billion for the first time in 1988. That's just shooting ahead a little bit, but I want to show you... Times Mirror works out. That's one thing. The other thing that he's known for a lot is being married to Buff, or as we know her, the philanthropist Dorothy Chandler. Her middle name is Buffum. What is going on with this family? I like Buff. Buff came from a family who owned a chain department stores in Long Long Beach, Long Beach Mercantile Co. Buff was a valedictorian of Long Beach's high school, graduating class in 1918. She went to Stanford, where she was voted campus queen, and that's where she met Norman Chandler. Norman had chosen a not pavillionaire to marry, so of course the Chandlers didn't like her. Barely anybody really showed up for their wedding. (laughs) They had a child get together, Camila, and then they would have probably many more. I couldn't find out. Mandy Moore was their daughter? Mandy Moore was their daughter. They, They had many more. Man- manual more after they had the child and they were married for a little bit she fell into like a depression not nothing too deep or serious but she was kind of just gray at this point harrison gray otis harrison i'm depressed otis <laughs> she was able to get psychiatric help and after that she started to be more active in civic activities and took part in cultural and community organizations as well as taking a job at the paper in 1944 what's funny about that was that she was about to take a position like a president of the volunteers at children's hospital and Chandler was like no come work for me and she's <laughs> like oh 
<laughs> She's just made that noise for the next 30 years. <laughs> she enrolled in journalism classes at USC. She took it very seriously. She became administrative assistant at the Times, taking part in everything from supervising building redecoration to helping shape the Times Mirror Co. annual report. She wrote speeches for Norman, and she took a special interest in covering women's issues as well as mm. arts and cultural like matters. Eliza. Like Eliza, yeah. She was very heavily involved with the Children's Hospital, as I said, and the Southern California Symphony Association. In 1950, she led the Save the Bowl fundraising campaign enabled to help the Hollywood Bowl reopen. They helped complete the season and the year in profit. Buff was elected to the Board of Trustees of Occidental College. She was named the University of California Board of Regents. She served on a 1950s Presidential Committee on Higher Education. Some say her greatest achievement was her drive to establish the Performing Arts Center of Los Angeles County, more commonly known as the Music Center. Dorothy Chandler Pavilion. That's it. Buff Pavilion. People don't get when I say that, but take me to the Buff Pavilion. <laughs> That's oh, a club concert. I go to. <laughs> Her efforts began in 1955 with a benefit party that raised over $40,000. This is for the Music Center. In 1955, she became a director of the Times, serving in that capacity until 1973. A huge deal. From 1969 to 1976, she served as an assistant to the chairman of the board and oversaw the design and construction of the company's new corporate headquarters in 1973. Chandler also worked with various editors to increase awareness of women's issues, and she launched the Los Angeles Times Women of the Year program in 1950. During its 26-year existence, the program honored more than 200 women in Southern California. <laughs> I feel pretty confident saying that I like her. <laughs> Let's not go out on a limb here, okay? The thing that I don't like about her, her husband. We're not... <laughs> <laughs> Here's what I know Norman Chandler for. He was the publisher of the LA Times during the time that got the city into a frenzy for both the Sleepy Lagoon murder trial, which whipped LA into a racial frenzy that led to the Zoot Suit riots, and he fully supported and again whipped the public into a racial frenzy after Pearl Harbor, resulting in the internment of legal Japanese and Japanese American citizens, which the LA Times supported throughout the entire situation. From the idea of like, eh, we should like look into that to like, we should ship them off to it's better that they're gone. The LA Times was so okay okay with that. They whipped everyone into a frenzy. That's what I know this era of LA Times is for. Too. Norman is also responsible for, quote, making Richard Nixon. <laughs> he was publishing an editorial in 1952 titled We Stand by Nixon. Nixon was an er- like an early front runner. And the guy that you saw at that art gallery? Yeah, I saw Richard Nixon and he, he's like, I'm not a crook. I'm like, you probably are. Nixon's campaign press secretary was a former mirror political editor, James Bassett. They picked him right off of the LA Times to work for Nixon. The Times endorsed Nixon and they blatantly slanted JFK. They dug deep into Nixon. Even always at, on the right side of history. Always. They dug deep into Nixon. Even as the Chandlers, both of them started to withdraw from him. I love Buff because she did not like or trust Nixon. One night she invited Nixon and his family upstairs for a snack in the dining room and Nixon met Buff in the hallway and asked if she could bring him a double bourbon because he didn't want his family to see him drink it. She said right then she saw how sneaky he was and yeah. later said that she disapproved of his deceptiveness, which is what I feel about Richard Nixon always. He's tricky dick. And she said Watergate and everything else falls into the same pattern. <laughs> Keep the silverware away from him. Make sure that when he goes to the bathroom, the door's open. <laughs> it's gross, but I want to make sure that I still have towels at the end of this. <laughs> Despite all of that, Zoot Suit Riots and Japanese internment and Richard Nixon, people still remember Norman's years as the publisher of the Times as being mild and hesitating in coverage. Yeah. Okay, (laughs) But in 1960, Norman decided to step aside and let the next Chandler heir step in, and this is his son, Otis. (laughs) 